Let's go ahead and do an example of a consolidation subsequent to acquisition. We're going to have the same example we had for the consolidation of date of acquisition, but now we're going to go ahead and carry it through for a year or two. Okay, let's go ahead and continue with the example we had from the previous slideshow. Um, again, in that case, we had that on January 1st, 2001, big company buys 100% of little company's outstanding common stock for $400,000. On that date, little had a book value of $250,000. Little's assets and liabilities had fair values equal to their book values except for inventory undervalued by 10,000, land overvalued by 20,000, property plant equipment net undervalued by $100,000 with a five year life. And again, we've got the same analysis of cost versus book value that we had previously, ending up with $60,000 of goodwill. Now let's go ahead and assume that, again, that occurred on January 1st. Let's assume by the time the end of the year rolls around, Little reports earnings of $50,000 and pays dividends of $10,000. Let's go ahead and run through our equity method entries. First, we need to record our, in our purchase of the investment. Again, so a debit to investment little for $400,000, the cost of our acquisition, and a credit to cash. Next, we need to report our share of their income. Again, under the equity method, we're going to be doing this over and over again. Income, dividends, amortization. Income, dividends, amortization. A uh, little company reported earnings of $50,000. We're the sole shareholder, so we have investment income of $50,000. And again, income increases Little's owner's equity, which means that our investment in Little, which represents our ownership of their equity, increases proportionately. Dividends. Little pays dividends of $10,000. We're the sole shareholder, so we get all $10,000. And again, the dividends reduce Little's equity, therefore our investment in Little goes down proportionally. Next we have our amortization. Again, we had two differentials that were of a finite life. First, the inventory differential. Recall that their inventory was undervalued by $10,000. Um, there are two ways to think about this. We can think about it either from the balance sheet perspective or the income statement perspective. From the income statement perspective, our argument could be, look, Little's inventory is worth more than they think it is. Therefore, when it was sold, they didn't record enough cost of goods sold. Therefore, they recorded too much income. Therefore, we recorded too much investment income. So we're going to go ahead and reduce our investment income to essentially correct their mistaken cost of goods sold entry. From the balance sheet perspective, we say, look, of our investment balance of $400,000, $10,000 of that was for this additional inventory value. By the end of the year, that inventory is gone, so we have to go ahead and reduce our investment by $10,000 because that portion of our investment asset no longer exists. By the same token, we have the amortization of our property plant and equipment differential. And again, we could think of that either from the income statement perspective or the balance sheet perspective. From an income statement perspective, again, we'd argue that Little's underreporting their property plant and equipment, which means they're underreporting their depreciation expense which means they're over-reporting their income, which means we're over-reporting our investment income. So what we're doing here by debiting investment income is we're bringing our investment income down to its correct level. From the balance sheet side, we'd say, look, of our investment acquisition cost of $400,000, $100,000 of that was for this undervalued property plant and equipment. That additional property plant equipment value is going to disappear over five years. This has, the property plant equipment has five years remaining useful life left. So we're going to need to write off that investment balance portion over five years at $20,000 per year. After this, our investment account has a balance of $410,000. Again, our initial cost of $400,000 plus $50,000 of income, minus $10,000 in dividends, minus $10,000 of amortization, minus $20,000 of amortization. Well, our investment income account has a balance of $20,000. Again, the reported earnings of $50,000 minus the combined amortization of $30,000. Okay, let's go ahead and record our elimination entries. First, we have, again, what I refer to as the S entry for subsidiary equity. We eliminate the subsidiary's beginning of year equity accounts, common stock, paid in capital next to subpar, and retained earnings. Again, that's beginning retained earnings. We adjust their inventory upwards by $10,000 because their inventory was undervalued at the date of purchase. Similarly, we adjust their property plant equipment upward by $100,000 because it too was undervalued. We record the $60,000 of goodwill. We lower their land by $20,000 because it was overvalued by $20,000. And all of those accounts combined equal $400,000, the balance in our investment in little at the beginning of the period. 
Next we need to go ahead and go through our A for amortization entries. And again, we had two uh, finite lived differentials. Our inventory differential of $10,000, again, we're always going to assume a FIFO inventory flow. That means that as long as the company's you know, inventory turnover ratio is greater than one, any inventory differential that existed at the beginning of the period will all have been sold by the end of the year. So while in the S entry, we go ahead and write their inventory up by 10,000, we then immediately remove that additional inventory and transfer the $10,000 to cost of goods sold. Clearly, we could have simply debited cost of goods sold in the S entry um, for $10,000 instead of debiting inventory and then eliminating the inventory. But it's nice to get things into a very systematic pattern so that we can always approach things the same way. It uh, eliminates confusion sometimes. The second of our amortization entries was the amortization of the property plant equipment. Again, the property plant equipment was $100,000. It had a five-year life. That means it was being consumed at the rate of $20,000 per year. Again, from our perspective as the parent, uh, Little's property plant equipment was undervalued. It was reported as too small a value. Therefore, by extension, their depreciation expense is also too small. We're going ahead and taking it upon ourselves to write their property plant equipment up to its correct value, and similarly to adjust their depreciation expense to the correct value. Next we have the I for investment income entry. Again, we have $20,000 of investment income in the parent's ledger, so we're going to go ahead and eliminate investment income with a debit and a credit to the investment or investment in little account. Finally, the D for dividends account. Um, recall that we only want the consolidated financial statements to reflect transactions or relationships with external third parties. The dividends paid by the subsidiary, the dividends paid by Little, were paid to Big, the related party. The only dividends paid to an external agent were the dividends paid by Big Company. So what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate the dividends paid by Little so we credit dividends declared. Again, dividends declared is a debit balance account. It reduces owner's equity. So to eliminate it, we're going to credit dividends declared and debit the investment in little. Um, just want to compare real quickly equity method entries versus elimination entries, and more specifically the, amort the amortization entries. Please note that in the equity method side, on the left hand side, the bottom two entries are the amortization entries. $10,000 to, to amortize the inventory differential, $20,000 to amortize the property plant equipment differential. Note that under the equity method, the amortization entry is an adjustment to our investment income and investment in little accounts. Over on the right hand side, under the elimination entries, we're actually adjusting the underlying um, items. Un you know, again, under the heading of A for amortization, you see that we're actually instead of adjusting you know, for the inventory differential, instead of adjusting investment income, we're actually adjusting the inventory and cost of goods sold account. Likewise, for the property plant equipment amortization, we're actually adjusting property plant equipment and depreciation expense. Extremely important, critical in fact, that you keep, that you be fully cognizant of the distinction between the equity method entries and the elimination entries. Equity method entries, that's how the investor, the parent, accounts for the investment on their balance sheet or in their, in their, in their books. The elimination entries are simply a, a worksheet device, a crutch, to enable us to create the combined or consolidated financial statements. Okay, let's go ahead and post those elimination entries to our worksheet. And again, unfortunately, um, to make the entire worksheet fit in the slide, I had to make it fairly small font. I apologize, but there's simply no two ways around it. Again, um, the worksheet is nothing more than the trial balance of big and the trial balance of little organized into a useful and helpful framework or pattern. It's, called a th it's referred to as a three-part worksheet. The uppermost part, the top four lines, represent the income statement. Sales less expenses plus investment income equals net income. The next four lines are the statement of retained earnings, beginning retained earnings plus income minus dividends equals ending retained earnings, and the remainder is the balance sheet. Um, again, due to space constraints, um, I went ahead and combined all the expenses into a single line. So again, in our elimination entries, we had a debit to cost goods sold 
and we had a debit to depreciation expense. Unfortunately, up in the income statement, I've simply got a single line for expenses, so we'll have to post both of those to that line. Um, again, let's go ahead and fill in the worksheet. Um, and again, I want to get the, the pattern down for the, in, the flow of information through the worksheet. We start at the top, taking computing our net income. You get sales minus expenses plus investment income as appropriate equals net income. We take that net income number and transfer that down to the statement of retained earnings, where it says add income. We complete our statement of retained earnings, beginning retained earnings plus income less dividends equals ending retained earnings. And we take that ending retained earnings figure and put it down in the balance sheet as ending retained earnings. Um, another area of frequent confusion is we've essentially we've got two retained earnings account, these accounts. We have beginning retained earnings and we have ending retained earnings. Whenever we do any adjustments, whenever we do any elimination entries, we're always adjusting the beginning retained earnings figure. The ending retained earnings down at the bottom of the worksheet in the balance sheet, that's simply the result that we bring down from the statement of retained earnings. Okay, let's go ahead and post the elimination entries to our worksheet. Um, first, we post the S entry. And again, what we have here, we have debits to the subsidiaries common stock, paid in capital, and beginning retained earnings. Again, I can't stress enough, we're going to be adjusting the beginning retained earnings. And we also record the various differential asset amounts. We added $10,000 to inventory, we added $100,000 to property plan equipment, we added $60,000 to goodwill, and we took away with a credit $20,000 from the land account, and all those things combined represent our $400,000 beginning investment balance. Okay, next we need to record the amortization entries in the worksheet. And again, we have two of them, one for the amortization of the inventory differential, the second for the amortization of the property plant and equipment differential. And recall the first one we involved a credit to inventory and a debit to cost goods sold to essentially acknowledge that the additional inventory that existed at the beginning of the year has now been sold. And secondly, to depreciate the property plant equipment. And again, that was $100,000 over five years or $20,000 per year. So we have a debit to cost goods sold and a credit to inventory and a debit to depreciation expense and a credit to property plant and equipment net. And as mentioned before, um, in the interest of space, I've used a single expenses row in this worksheet. And so the debits to cost goods sold and depreciation expense are both combined in that expenses line. Now, in this and other examples, we've used a property plant and equipment net account rather than a separate accumulated depreciation. A little bit later in this lesson, we'll talk about how things change when we use a separate accumulated depreciation account. It's not, you know, it's not the, the end of the world doing so. It makes it a little bit more complex, but it's really nothing to be overly concerned with. Next we have our I for income entry, I for investment income. And again, this should be the easiest entry of all. We look at the worksheet. The worksheet says investment in over under the big column, investment income $20,000. That's a positive income, so it's a credit balance. So to eliminate the investment, in investment income, we have to debit investment income and credit the investment in little account. Again, another, er another frequent area of confusion is getting the investment income and the investment in little accounts mixed up. Again, investment income is an income statement account. The investment in little is the asset representing our ownership of little. Our final, our final elimination entry is the D for dividends entry. We eliminate the subsidiary's dividends declared with a credit. Again, the dividends declared account is a debit account. It reduces equity. So to eliminate it, we credit the dividends declared and debit investment in little. Once we've posted all of our entries, we need to go ahead and add across. Keeping in mind, so go ahead and add across, keeping in mind the debit and credit rules for each of these types of accounts. Uh, just one by one, the sales account, 500,000 for big, 300,000 for little no adjustments, so we, they add together to $800,000. Next are expenses, uh, $320,000 for big, $250,000 for little, and then we have two debit adjustments for ten dollars and 20000 And again, for expenses, a debit is a positive number, so we're going to go ahead and add $30,000 to the reported expenses for a total of $600,000. The investment income account gets canceled out. It has to, it has to be closed out to zero. So we've got a $20,000 credit balance in the big column. 
offset by a $20,000 debit in the debit column, netting out to zero. When we get to a subtotal like net income, we have to work, we can't simply add across, we have to work our way down the consolidated income statement. So looking at the consolidated column, revenues of 800,000 less expenses of 600,000 equals our net income of 200,000. And again, if we simply added across the net income line, we'd have 200,000 plus 50,000 is 250. But again, the problem is we're essentially double counting our investment income. Okay, um, next we go to our standard of retained earnings. Uh, we take that $200,000 and transfer that down to um, the statement of retained earnings. And now we can start working through our statement of retained earnings. Beginning retained earnings, again, we've eliminated or canceled out the little's beginning retained earnings, so we're left with big's retained earnings of 400000 We add the income that we brought down from the income statement. As far as the dividends are concerned, we've eliminated the subsidiaries' dividends, so we're left with the parents' dividends of 30000 And so any retained earnings, again, don't. whenever we're getting a subtotal like net income or any retained earnings, work your way down the consolidated column. So 400000 plus 200000 less 30000 is $570,000, and we immediately transfer that down to the bottom of the balance sheet for ending retained earnings. And again, the reason to transfer that down immediately is so that you sort of populate that cell so you're not so you don't run the temptation of adding across the retained earnings column at the, the, the retained earnings row at the bottom and you know inadvertently putting an incorrect number in there. Finally let's do the balance sheet. Again cash and receivables there were no adjustments so we simply add across thirty thousand plus twenty thousand. Inventory as reported it was fifty thousand plus forty thousand or ninety thousand we added $10,000 because their inventory was undervalued, then we realized that, hey, by the end of the year, it's all been sold, so we take it away again. And so we're left with the $90,000. The investment in little account, again, our check figure, that account has to go away. So the investment in little has a $410,000 debit balance. We have a, another debit of 10000 so that's a total of 420000 in debits, offset by 420000 in the credit column. So that nets out to zero, and we're happy with the way that's looking. Property plant equipment net, as reported, we had 400,000 plus 240,000, or sorry, we had 460,000 plus 240,000, or 700,000 total. We added 100,000, and then we took away 20 because we depreciated part of it. So that gives us that gives us a total of 780,000. The land account, as reported, is 100,000 plus 40,000, or 140,000. The little land was overvalued, so we credited or took away 20,000 which left us with 120000 total. And finally, the goodwill, we created that of $60,000, and that sits on the consolidated balance sheet. Over on the credit side of the balance sheet, there were no adjustments to our liabilities, so we simply added across. 300000 plus 50000 is 350. For our common stock and paid-in capital next to par accounts, as always, we eliminate the subsidiaries' equity accounts. We're left with the parents' equity accounts. 50000 for common stock, 130000 for paid in capital next par. Then lastly, retained earnings, we've already filled that in because we brought that down from the income statement. Okay, now where do we stand after we do all this? At the end of the first year or at the beginning of the second year? At the beginning of the second year, Little's balance sheet has come, again, this is Little's actual balance sheet. This is not the consolidated number. This is on Little's books. They've got common stock and paid in capital of 20 and 80,000 as before. But now their retained earnings is up to 190,000. Again, last year it was 150,000, but they made 50,000 and then paid out 10,000 in dividends, so it's up to 190. Our investment in little account has a balance of $410,000. And let's go ahead and break that down and think of what that represents. Our investment in little represents, you know, first $290,000 for the book value of little, plus there's $80,000 of the remaining property plant in differential. Again, initially it was 100000 but we wrote off 20000 of that. There's still $60,000 of goodwill there, and there's still that $20,000 negative land differential. The inventory differential is gone. Again, it was all consumed or written off that very first year. So our S entry for year two is already established based upon where we stand at the end of year one. Basically, the S entry in year two sort of reestablishes where we left off at the end of year one. So for the S entry, again, we would eliminate the subsidiaries beginning of 
period equity accounts. So at the beginning of year two, again, common stock paid in capital support and retained earnings of 20,000, 80,000, and 190,000 respectively. And we also record the remaining differential assets. Again, property plant equipment has an $80,000 differential remaining. The goodwill is still all there. And the land still has that negative 20,000. And that closes against our beginning of period investment account. Um, let's assume that in year two, Little had income of 100,000 and paid no dividends. So in that, and again, so this will establish um, exactly what we have at the beginning of year three. At, at the beginning of year three, we'd elim we would eliminate the beginning of year little equity accounts. Again, common stock and paid in capital is still 80,000. Little's retained earnings is now up to 290,000. Again, it was 190,000 last year, plus their income of 100,000 minus zero dividends. Property plant equipment net is down to 60,000 now. Next year it'll be down to 40,000. Then it'll be down to 20,000. Then it'll be down to zero after five years. The goodwill is still there, and the land is still there also. The investment account has gone, has gone up a little bit. Has gone down a little bit. It was last year's investment balance of $410,000 plus their income of 100,000 minus their amortization, so it should be $490,000 again, up from 410 up to 490. Again, year by year, the differential value assigned to the property plant and equipment is going to drop as it gets written off. After five years, it'll be completely gone. The goodwill and land differentials are going to continue to exist indefinitely, um, unless until you know, unless and until they get impaired.